masks don't go together well, and I think, I think my headset needs to get replaced. Bend gently. So, sorry. Uh, welcome back. It's good to see you this morning uh, inside in worship. I'm Peter Cottrell, in case you don't remember. This is Reverend Macon Armstead, um, and some of you haven't met him before, and he'll get to take off his mask when he preaches this morning. Uh, we serve as pastors here at Coronado. Uh, Mike, Alice, and Steve, alongside our ushers and greeters, our CCMs, are delighted that you are here with us worshiping this morning. We're still asking for your patience as we continue to try to make this process uh, easier and uh, make sense. Um, all of the guidelines that we're working with right now have been done in consultation with our medical team. And so that's why it's important we're, we're following them and we're shifting now as folks, more and more folks get vaccinated. It should mean that we get to do different, broader, better options. So right now we're still asking if you'll wear your mask at all times. Uh, Mike and Macon and I have all been tested in the last 24 hours so that we can take our masks off in, in the sanctuary. Please don't sing. The medical team said even whisper singing with your mask on is not appropriate yet, but soon I'm hopeful that the vaccinations will allow us to have a service that allows us to sing. That's the hardest part for me. Uh, we've uh, put the seating arrangements in place carefully so that we can contact Trace in case we find out somebody has uh, been uh, has, has been in contact with somebody who has got uh, COVID-19. Um, some of you, let me ask how many of you have had both of your shots and your waiting time? I'm, I'm finding each week that um, that's the group that's more willing to be inside and here. Um, my, my greatest desire is by Easter to be able to have a time when people can be in the room, sit next to each other and sing in the same room and be an hour long because everybody in the room is vaccinated or been tested. So I'm hopeful it's not quite, we're not quite there yet. Um, we know it's still difficult, but we ask you not to congregate too closely in the courtyard or in the parking lot. If you wear your mask, you can talk to each other, but try to keep the same kind of distancing requirements. We know that that's hard for us as well. Um, we were tested. If you test positive in the next few days, please let us know so that we can make sure that we have other folks uh, go get tested. We never pass on the information of who told us they were sick. We always ask to find out those folks that were closest so they can go get tested and be sure that, that we're not passing along. Um, today is UMCOR Sunday. We would probably typically have a special envelope. Um, I just wanted to mention it. I don't think we're gonna do anything different today, but I just wanted to make sure that there was something that felt normal to me. Um, let us pray. God of great love and amazing grace, we come to you again this day filled with grace and gratitude that we can be present with you and with each other in worship. While we long to have our whole family gathered here, we still come to seek you this morning. We are hungry for your presence and for your word. We are honored to be yours. Hear our shouts of praise and the songs of our hearts as we praise and honor you this morning. All this we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Hear these words of call to worship from Psalm 121. Lift up your eyes, people of God. We look to the hills, we stare into the desert, we gaze at the horizon, where is our help? Our help is from the Lord who made heaven and earth. We will lift up our eyes and follow God's way. Mike is gonna sing our hymn of gathering. Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. Be thou forever near me, my master and my friend. I shall not fear the battle if thou art bound. Side, no wonder from the past. 
Steve, if you can put the responsive reading on the screen. We'll join together and offer our responsive reading. You play the part of all. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Those who redeem from trouble and gathered in from his lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in the desert wastes, finding no way to an inhabited town, hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way until they reached an inhabited town. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. I cast all my cares upon you. I lay all of my burdens down at your feet And any time that I don't know what to do I will cast all of my cares upon you I will cast all my cares upon you. Let us pray. O oh God of great love and amazing grace, we come to you from many different places this morning. Some are feeling light and free ready to get out and engage the world once more without, while others are still waiting, sitting, trying to be patient for that ticket to freedom. We are mindful that some in our world are in very desperate circumstances, holding on for just one more day, even one more meal as they're personal economics have been devastated. Remind us once more that even when we think we have little, we do have enough, and others watch their children eat while they cannot, and still others watch while their children go without. We pray for children and other vulnerable persons. Give us a heart for them that beats the same as your heart for them. Give us heart and head and hand to be you in the world around us. Fill us with gratitude. Allow us the common bond, the same broken heart to be with those who are working through their grief. Challenge us when we worry only about ourselves and when we have more than enough and do not share. 
we offer you thanks for your love. Make our love more like your love. Today, we pray for your church around the globe as we all work to revision who we are to be in this new future that we did not expect. Keep us grounded in your word, called to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with you. Right now, we beg you, give us the same heart as Christ when we pray his words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. supply my breath of life still more awesome than I know you are my reward worth living for still more awesome than I know and all of you is more than enough for all of for every thirst and every need, you satisfy me with your love. And all I have in you is more than than I know. You are my reward worth living for. Still more awesome than I know. And all of you is more than enough for all of me. For every thirst and every need you satisfy me with your love and all I have in you is more than enough more than all I want more than all I need you are more than enough for me more than all more than all I can see. You are more than enough, and all of you is more than enough for all of me, for every thirst and every need. You satisfy me with your all I have in you is more than enough, is more than enough, is more than Check. Good. All right. 
We are learning. It's good to see you all this morning. I know we're asking you to try to come every other week to make sure that everyone gets in there and into the room to worship. So um, if you're not here next week, I won't take offense that my preaching is bad. But in two weeks, if you're not here, I have the seating chart. I know who you are, and I, I know where you live. So let us pray together. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Melt us, mold us, fill us and use us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Amen. As we are journeying through personal piety and social holiness this Lenten season, what John Wesley would call practical theology, Dr. Amy Jill Levine has been our guide. Her book, The Sermon on the Mount, discusses this influential section of scripture that speaks to our ways of life as disciples. The part of this sermon that we will read today in Matthew 6, 9 through 13, is likely not new to many of us. However, it may be a little different than the version some of you can recite from memory. It's the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, and it goes a little something like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. How many of you may have gotten a little tripped up with that reading? It is not the King James Version, which is likely what most of us know by heart. This is a closer interpretation of the Greek in the New Testament. Even still, as Jesus was giving the sermon to likely a Jewish audience, he would have been speaking in Aramaic. So the Greek is already a translation filled with its own potential errors and challenges. Dr. Levine provides a breakdown of exactly what Jesus would have been saying here in the Lord's Prayer and what he's not saying and what that might mean for us today in regards to our own spiritual lives as well as the justice and peace we strive for in our society. The prayer starts with our Father in heaven, which is a common practice for Jewish prayers to address God the Father. This language symbolizes familial relationship, closeness, intimate connection. I do not talk to strangers the way that I speak with my parents, my spouse, my friends. Whoever is family to you, Think of the way you speak with them, the way you interact with them, and compare that with the way you interact with God. If family is strained for you, if speaking with family or loved ones is a hard thing, how does that shape the way that we see God as parent? Our Father being in heaven is not simply a cute Disney detail for us to imagine God floating in a cloud above us. At the time Jesus spoke these words, our Father in heaven would have been a political statement. Now, when I say the word political, I don't mean Democrat, Republican, conservative, liberal. I mean the true definition of the word politics the way we govern as a society. Roman emperors were sometimes referred to as father of the fatherland. Jesus, 
in the Lord's Prayer is reminding us there is only God who rules, our Father in heaven. One true source of power, one kingdom, and it is not Rome or Babylon or America. Praying to our Father in heaven makes our theology politically attuned to what God's kingdom is like and how it is different from the little kingdoms in our lives. This notion continues when Jesus says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let your reign be realized, God, not ours. Not the systems and institutions of oppression, corruption, greed, and violence. Show us how to live into your kingdom of peace and justice where everyone is loved and everyone has enough. As we pray this prayer, we so often pray, perhaps we might be a little more inclined to think deeply about these words and the ramifications they have for our personal lives as disciples and for our society as a whole. The Bible really likes food imagery and language, which I really appreciate because I love to eat. Lots of stories revolve around meals and crops, dinners and feasts. Jesus is often at the table eating with tax collectors, women who are silenced and othered, those who have been ostracized from the community because of physical mental or emotional conditions. Jesus broke daily bread with those on the margins of society. This is a vision of God's kingdom. Sharing a meal with someone who does not fit the status quo of successful, productive, beneficial, or valuable. Jesus flips our understanding of who is a VIP by breaking bread with those whose society forgets. When we pray, give us this day our daily bread, Dr. Levine shows us that a translational issue may be present, translating from Aramaic to Greek to Latin to Old English to Common English to all the different translations that we might be used to in our lives a better interpretation of the Greek in, this, in Scripture here might be, give us tomorrow's bread today. Give us tomorrow's bread today. For a people of promise, anticipating the coming kingdom of God, We are asking for the heavenly banquet to be made real in our lives now. God, may your kingdom come where everyone has a seat at the table and every belly is filled. Is that the case for our world today? Is that the case for New Smyrna Beach? Coronado is significantly concerned with this need and regularly engages in partners with local feeding ministries like Hum, Colors of Hunger, Derbyshire, to name a few. This is the kind of social holiness that we ought to continue striving for Because until all bellies are filled, we have some kingdom work to do. We ask God to forgive us our sins, debts, or trespasses, and to help us forgive those who have 
sinned or, trans, or trespassed against us, who are indebted to us. We learn elsewhere in Matthew that unless we forgive others, then our sins are not forgiven. It is clear that we need God's help in forgiving others. For us to pull up a seat next to our enemy at Christ's messianic banquet, the vision of restoration and fulfillment throughout all of scripture, forgiveness is required. If you're like me, then you start going through the laundry list of all the things you've done that you need forgiveness for. Maybe uh, you called your brother a mean name. Maybe you ate that last piece of cake without asking if anybody else wanted a piece. Maybe that light was more red than yellow when I went through it. Dr. Levine reminds us of the ways in which our sins or rather, the ways in which we are indebted take hold socially, economically, in our way of life. The Florida Conference has put many initiatives in place for both congregations and for clergy to work towards anti-racism. One of the initial steps of being anti-racist is for people of privilege to acknowledge the ways in which we benefit from institutions and systems. To see not only internal or interpersonal racism, what I think about someone or how I treat someone, but to understand racism's role in our larger society. If we are to be working towards the kingdom of God, we must acknowledge, name, and unlearn our debts and trespasses towards people different than us at a systemic level. Education, church, criminal justice, housing, the environment, food. How are all of these systems structured to benefit people in power, people with money, people with lighter skin, at the expense of those with less power, less money, or darker skin. When we can begin to see our role in the system, we can begin to advocate against where it's broken and do the social holiness kind of ministry that says everyone is worthy. Everyone deserves enough. Everyone has a seat at God's table. The temptation we are asking God to lead us away from is the temptation to not do this work. To not help others. To not question our privilege. To not share our resources. To not fight against injustice. To not care for those experiencing homelessness, poverty, or suffering. At the personal level, this must be our individual call to keep the vision of the kingdom of God in our hearts. And this must be our charge as a community to live a life together that reflects the dinner table of God's kingdom, God's family. When we ask God to deliver us from evil, to rescue us from temptation, we are praying for God to give us strength to withstand our inner desire for more money, more status, more power, more control. If these are the things we strive for, and I have strived for these things in my life, I don't think we're praying to the God of Abraham, Moses, or Jacob. Instead, we are praying to the God of wealth and prosperity to put ourselves first. The Greek version of the Lord's Prayer in Matthew does not include, for thine is the kingdom, 
the power, and the glory forever and ever. It is from the Didache, which I've probably pronounced wrong, which is an early Christian text on the teachings of the 12 disciples and other ancient sources. But after breaking down the rest of the prayer that Jesus taught, can you hear that political, that societal nature of these closing words? Jesus is making a practical, theological claim here about who God is. God's kingdom, not ours, reigns forever. And God is the source of all power and glory, not us. As Dr. Levine writes, if we recognize that these political terms refer to something theological about God rather than human about us, we are better able to challenge injustice in the present. Understanding what Jesus meant by this prayer gives us a theology and a practice for how to discover personal piety and social holiness in our lives. I invite us to close by praying the Lord's Prayer together. This will be the third time that you've heard it today. We will use the King James Version, because that is likely what we're most accustomed to. Whether you know these words by heart or you need to look them up on your phone, I encourage you to hear them and speak them as if for the very first time. Listen to the Spirit speaking to you through this prayer. And perhaps get curious about how your spiritual life might grow by praying this prayer daily, as well as how your life might be transformed by this prayer to live a life that points towards the kingdom of God out there in the world. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in New Smyrna Beach as it is in heaven. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Because we're not passing plates, we do the offering by inviting you as you leave to put it in the offering box, um, but we do want to play the offering video. Thank you. 
Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. Children, all are we. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth, and let it be After the benediction, the ushers will come down the center aisle and dismiss you so that we can keep a certain amount of distance and let those folks uh, pass out the, um, through the doors without us bunching up too much. The, in the Connect Center, every Sunday from now on, we're going to have communion elements in case that you'd like to take those each week. They are still sealed, um, and we'll, we hope sometime soon to be able to offer communion in the way we're all used to it. Hear these words of benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Now go in peace. Amen and amen.